I mean, Coinbase has been a really important voice in this. I think, you know, three key players came together during this election cycle. Coinbase, Ripple, and Andreessen Horowitz came together to really make sure that crypto was front foot on the agenda. We're gratified by the degree that they've, um, the Trump team has had an open door with us and given us an opportunity to talk about our vision about crypto and, and to see them ultimately adopt much of that. We're very excited to do our part to fulfill the president's vision of making the U.S. a crypto and digital asset leader of the world. There's a lot of work to be done. There was a lot of damage done over the last four years that all of us in the industry and, and working with our you know, policymakers can, uh, can kind of get going on to restore the U.S.'s position as a global leader. You know, Trump talks about making America great again. I think he's going to make a crypto great again in the United States. Nice. Going to a different economy. And we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers in Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box. Uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to eight percent of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity as an American, you know. Uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it, it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Chinese bank ICBC has been hit by a ransomware attack, and the U.S. Treasury market, as a result of that, um, has been disrupted. This, according to the Financial Times, we're going to get more right now with Bloomberg's Shanali Basic. Shanali, what do we know? Uh, listen, we have the Financial Times now reporting that ICBC, one of China's largest banks here, was hit with a ransomware attack. And remember, they're a, a very significant intermediary in the Treasury market. The SIFMA has told his members that this has been part of the reason here uh, that the system is kind of clogged up, if you will, during that auction that we saw a little bit before. The attack had prevented ICBC, according to the Financial Times, from settling treasury trades on behalf of other market participants. A large executive at a major bank also telling the paper that such a large party on the fixed income clearing corp uh, creates major concerns, potentially impacting the liquidity of treasury markets. Now it was not just the poor auction. It was absolutely lousy, and, and uh, 
uh, you know, when when the dealers have to step in to save a treasury auction, uh, that's a rare occurrence. And Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, please like and subscribe if you do like what you're listening to. Please inform your friends and family and spread all over social media. It is imperative that we get back to learning finances and understand how the world really works. Because once we understand how the world really works, we understand that it is all planned out. Now, I want to thank those who purchased the books Crypto Teacher and the New Road Order book. Remember, the New World Order book shows you how the world really works, and it is definitely time for you to wake up out of that sleep, especially in the times that we're in right now. And 2024 is going to be one of our most entertaining years. We have the presidential election. We have the drums of beating. We have the emerging markets going to be flipping the switch on the fourth industrial revolution. And they finally start to cut rates. And we know Japan is going to start raising rates. And those trillions of dollars that are sitting in money market accounts are going to start flowing over to the emerging markets. And we know the mass of magicians are about to set up that distraction so they can cut rates while we still have inflation. And in the fourth quarter, once the election is over, the movie begins. And also, guys, I want to thank those who purchased the three kids' books. It's time to re-educate. Also, much love to those who donate to the Cash Shop Patreon. Much love. Keep it coming. Guys, if you're not a part of the Patreon, make sure you're donating to the channel through the actual Cash App. But guys, this next Bitcoin and crypto bull run is going to be a utility run. So you want to make sure you have the cryptos that have real utility. And much love to those who are shopping at both stores. Keep it coming. And of course, guys, we get into Bitcoin and cryptos first. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And right now we have crypto moving up. We have Bitcoin and Ethereum pumping. And anytime we get Bitcoin dominance like this, it normally lasts for about six months. Now, don't forget we have options tomorrow because they did launch the Bitcoin spot ETF options. I see a small pullback and then we move up. And like I told you, I expected a bigger pump. We did get a bigger pump once the stock market closed. So when we're going through these pumps, a lot of times we pump at night. Now, we also have stocks up, and we have Bitcoin open interest at its all-time highs. And don't forget, guys, next week, we have Bitcoin futures. So make sure you're paying attention to the actual indicators. We have yield rates right now pulling back. We have the dollar pulling back, but yields and the dollar still strong. We have volume in crypto right now up. We have Tether and USDC. And we have Tether mints another $1 billion on Ethereum. So as long as we see Tether minting these billions of dollars, we know we're going to continue on getting a pump. We know where the pump comes from. And we also know who's doing the pump. And that's the Fed. And remember the crypto teacher tells you. And then, guys, we have the repo at $217 billion moving up. Make sure you're pulling that on a daily basis during the week. And in the middle of next month, we have Fed Jerome Powell in the house. And will he lower interest rates once again? If he does, of course, it's going to bring more liquidity. If he pauses, that's going to send yield rates higher. And then on top of it, pull back stocks and cryptos. So we definitely have to watch the Fed next month. And for the rest of the year, we don't have any type of catalyst that's going to move us forward. So we know how the mainstream media does. They're going to bring in a narrative in order to either pump us or dump us. So we definitely got to pay attention also to the news. And we have some big news to go over in this video later. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Now we have the Bitcoin and Ethereum spot ETFs. We have BlackRock, Fidelity, and Grayscale. Bitcoin and Ethereum spot ETFs right now are up. Now, we have BlackRock bought $626 million worth of Bitcoin on November 20th. And again, the inflows have been big, but we know eventually we get outflows. So make sure you're paying attention to both. 
Now, getting over into a little crypto news, we have Bitwise files for a spot Solana ETF. So it looks like they're just getting ready for this new SEC chairman. Now, we have Sui Network is back after being down for two hours. Also, we have Coinbase adds Floki, these meme coins. And remember, Mika goes into effect December 30th. So we're going to see how crypto reacts. And also in the United States, we know their legislation is going to be similar to the EU. Now we have Coinbase takes the number one spot in finance on the iOS app store in the United States. And we know when Bitcoin is this high, the sheep are going to come right on in. And we know they're going to get destroyed. We've seen the movie before and we know the narrative on the television Bitcoin is going to 200,000, going to a million. Guys, we know it never goes straight up. We always get a plunge before we do make that big move up. And we know they have to build this fourth industrial revolution. And that's what these digital assets are for. Now we have Coinbase Wallet launches USDC rewards offering a 4.7 APY just for holding USDC in your on-chain wallet. I'm not your financial advice, not financial advice. Please do your own research. But we know with banks right now, they want you to do a minimum deposit to get that type of APY or uh, hold your money for a certain period. With Coinbase and asking for any minimums and no lockup period. And this is perfect for people new to the space because they can learn the technology without taking any risk. And remember the crypto teacher told you. And then lastly, guys, while everybody's looking at Bitcoin saying, look, 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 it's going to hit 100000 We have MasterCard and JP Morgan link up to bring foreign exchange onto the blockchain. And yes, you heard that correct. Guys, everything's going to be tokenized and put on blockchain. And you're talking about a trillion dollar industry. And it's the same banks leading the charge because we know the banks are the biggest what? I'll let you finish that. Get in the lab and get prepared for this fourth industrial revolution because the robots, algorithms, and drones are about to take this economy over and the sheep are about to go inside the metaverse because Doge is going to put them at home. And remember the crypto teacher told you because he knows when it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. But that's all I have for you. Don't forget about the books. Crypto teacher and the new world order book. Plus the three kids' books is time to re-educate. Also, new to cryptos, Coinbase, Bitchu, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip stocks, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks. The see where the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. Most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Yashua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2.
King Nashi and Drama King Say New York Long COVID 33 Part 3 King Yashi and Drama Tam goes to China. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.